Hey guys, in lesson 11, we're going to be using our factoring skills and something you learned or should have learned in Algebra 1, and that is the quadratic formula. Hopefully you're familiar with that. We will review it. To solve polynomial equations. So we've been doing polynomials pretty much the whole course so far. Well, now we're going to put the polynomials in equations and say solve the equation. All right, and uh, again, we're going to use we could use factoring or we could use the quadratic formula. Now we, we know many methods of factoring. We're just gonna review a couple right here and, and show how this works. And something like this you, you would have done before. Solve just finding a quad or solving a quadratic equation. So this is an x squared equation. Uh, you would factor it, you know, so you would you would get your two binomials. You know, x minus five x plus 2. I think that looks familiar to you, right? Now, you make the argument, okay, I have a number, x minus 5, times, this is multiplication, another number, x plus 2, equals 0. When you have a number, any number, times any other number, and it equals 0, think about what that means. I have a number, any number, times another number, it equals 0. Okay, think of any number in your head, any number. I'll, I'll pick seven, right? Seven times a number. Seven times any number. What does this number have to be? Well, it has to be zero because seven times zero is zero. It doesn't matter what number you picked. Whenever you want to get zero for an answer, that's why we have to get these equations equal to zero. Whenever you want zero for an answer, one of the factors has to be zero. This allows us, this property allows us to say, okay, if that's true, then x minus 5 might equal 0, or x plus 2 might equal 0. So you're breaking it up into two equations. You've probably done this before, but we're going to be using our advanced levels of factoring now to do more complicated ones. This one's an easy one. So you get x equals 5. You just add 5 to both sides, and you get x equals negative 2. So you would write it in a solution set. Solution set, you use these braces, like curly brackets, and you can put it in any order. We're gonna, let's get used to writing the lowest to highest, so negative 2 and then 5. If you put it in the other order, it doesn't matter. It's just that for other things we're going to be doing, low to high is probably best. All right, here's another example. This time it's a common factor. I'm going to pull out a 3x. <clears throat> And it's going to be x plus 6. And now I, and it, just because it doesn't look the same, you still have factors. Like one of the factors is 3x and the other factor is x plus 6. So you do it the same way. You say, okay, 3x equals 0 or x plus 6 equals 0. Okay? Well, divide by 3. 0 divided by 3, a lot of people say, oh, it's 3. No. 0 divided by anything is 0. x equals 0. Subtract 6, x equals negative 6. So my solution set here would be negative 6 and 0. Those would be the two x values. Now, further down the page. The quadratic formula. I'm going to go through this video as if you've seen this before. So if you're like, oh my God, I never did this before, don't worry about it. We'll talk more about it in class. I'll help you with it, okay? This is a formula that can that is used to solve quadratic equations. They have to look like this. They have to be in this exact form right here. AX squared plus BX plus C. Here's the form. The, they have to look like this. And if they do, you can use this formula to find the roots or to find the solutions. They don't come out nice. They come out to be radicals sometimes. So, and then they will in this case. So we say round to the nearest hundredth. You gotta pay attention to what we want it rounded to. So we're gonna say x equals. Now, a, b, and c. a is one because that's in front of x squared. Lay, uh, let's write that out. a equals one, b equals negative four. You just compare it to this and c is negative six. Again, I'm assuming you've done this before. That's why I'm going fast. 
x equals negative b. So negative, negative 4, negative, negative 4, plus minus square root of, see this big square root here? b squared, again, just plugging a, b, and c into the quadratic formula as if you've done this before. And c is negative 6 over 2 times a. Now I'm going to simplify this. Negative negative 4 is 4. You could put all this in your calculator without the radical. This is 16 plus 24. So this comes out to be 40 over 2. And what you have to understand now is there's two answers. That's why it's plus minus. So I have to break this up. You could break it up if you have room below, or I'm just going to go to the side. You're breaking this up into two answers. 4 plus radical 40, all divided by 2. 4 minus radical 40, all divided by 2. And now you're going to need a calculator. I did this ahead of time to save us time on the video, but in, your, in class you have to type that in your calculator, and we'll help you with that tomorrow. It comes out to be, the plus one comes out to be 5.16, and negative, the other one's negative 1.16, and again, that would be written in a solution set. So you, they, they don't come out to be nice numbers, they're, they're decimals. 5.16 and negative one, oh, negative, negative, negative here, guys, negative. 1.16. I think I said it, but I didn't write it. All right, moving on to the next page. We can also use some of our newer factory methods to solve some higher degree polynomials. So now you'll see x to the third, x to the third, um, x to the fourth, x to the fourth, all right, then some more x to the third. So let's take care of these here. And we got to think of all, we're putting all our factoring methods together now. You have to come up with the method to use. I'm going to help you out with these, but in class tomorrow, you're going to be expected to determine how I'm going to factor. Always look for a GCF first. Write that down on the side here. GCF first. Always, 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 always. Now, there may not always be a GCF. In example A, there is. There's an X. We could take out an X. And we're left with X squared minus 6X plus 8. Easy enough. We should be able to factor that. We've done this before, x minus 4, x minus 2. OK, that gives you the x squared minus 6x plus 8. Now I have three factors. That's OK. Same thing, you're just going to get three answers now. x equals 0, x equals 4, x equals 2. Because remember, you're trying to get 0. So what number minus 2 gives me 0? Positive 2. What number minus 4 gives me 0? Positive 4. This is just plain old x. What number x gives me 0? Well, 0. 0 equals 0. So that's kind of how that works. So whenever you have a plain x factor, it's always 0. The root is 0. All right, going on to b. Now this is four terms, and there's no common factor. So we're going to use our factor by grouping method. Remember, that only works when you have four terms. So we're going to kind of just split the middle a little bit, split down the middle, factor something out of these two. I could take out an x squared, and that leaves x plus 6. And over here, I could take out a negative, uh, a negative 9, and that leaves x plus 6. And now my method is, okay, I take my x plus 6 common binomial. x plus 6 is the common binomial. x squared minus 9 is the remaining terms. Put it together as your second binomial. Keep your equals 0. Again, this factoring is what we've done. We've done this. You should be good at this by now. And now x squared minus 9, ladies and gentlemen, does go down further x plus 3x minus 3. So you are going to need to factor completely in these equations. And now you got it. x equals negative 6, x equals negative 3, and x equals 3. Okay, and put that in a solution set. All right. Now, again, no common factor, so it's not GCF. It's not what we just did in example B because there's not four terms, there's only three. 
This is just a regular, it's a trinomial, but it's a higher degree trinomial. So we do that with two binomials. We still do it with two binomials. And instead of x and x, you're going to put x squared and x squared. And to get 45, it's either 45 times 1, 9 times 5. Think of the ways to get 45. Well, if you use 9 and 5, 9 times 5 is 45, and you can get 14. 9 plus 5 is 14. So I'm going to use that, and I'm going to go negative, negative, so that I get my negative 14. Now the inner is negative 9x squared, and the outside is negative 5x squared, and that see, that's where the negative 14x squared comes from. This is my check. Remember we did that? Okay, so, oops, a little bit of bigger eraser there. Okay, so, are we factored completely? No, we're not, because x squared minus 9, of course, is x plus 3, x minus 3. And x squared minus 5 has to come down. Now, this one's tricky, equals 0. Don't forget the equals 0. This one's tricky. This is obviously negative 3, and this one is 3. What about this guy? Well, let's do it. x squared minus 5 equals 0. How would you solve that equation? You should have done this at some point in your algebra lifetime. x squared equals 5. And then take the square root of both sides. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but when you take a square root, there's a positive and a negative root. So, it's, so you're going to get x equals positive radical 5 and x equals negative radical 5. That's always the case when you take a square root. There's a positive and a negative answer. If you didn't learn that in Algebra 1, you're getting it now. Always two answers when you take a square root. We'll talk more about that in class tomorrow if you've, if you've never heard that before. Uh, here I have a typo. Well, I think I fixed it on your paper, but this should be a 3 here on my, on my screen. It's different. That should be a 3. Okay, so um, uh, I could take out a common factor. I do have common factors. I have 3 and I have x squared that can come right out of this polynomial. So I'm left with x squared plus 4x minus 5. And then I have a trinomial left over that breaks down to x plus 5x minus 1. All right, so 3x squared equals 0. Divide by 3, x squared equals 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. So you're just going to get 0. 0, negative 5, and 1. Negative 5, 0, and 1. Again, you should be writing these solutions for everything. I just don't want to lengthen the video for you. All these should be written in solution sets, just like I did right there. All right, this one here. Now, these two here, or this one here, we don't have it equal to 0. That's the first thing you need to do. So let's going to move that, subtract that 20x to the other side. OK, and then it should be similar to what we've been doing. So now we got uh, 2x to the third plus 4x squared minus 20x. All right, take out a 2x. Pause the video and try these last couple. See what you can come up with. And then come back to it. I know some of you like to go ahead and try the classwork. Well, this is what you should be doing. Pause the video and try these. If you're still iffy, keep watching. Okay? So um, now I can break this down more. x plus 5x minus 2. Is that right? Oh, no, I can't. 5 and 2 does not work, Mr. Ventry. So now, look what we have to do. Whoops. Let's see here. We have to erase too much. Okay. 2x to the third plus 4x squared minus 20x. Okay, so we took out our 2x, and we're left with x squared plus 2x plus 10, or minus 10. Now, this does not factor. 
does not factor because we just tried. So 2x equals 0. That's x equals 0. That's one answer. This needs to go in our quadratic formula. So remember the quadratic formula? Well, if, a fa if it cannot be factored, you're going to go to the quadratic formula. So x equals, we're going to go negative b. And again, I'm doing this under the assumption that you've done this before. b squared is 4 minus 4ac all over 2a. So it's going to be negative 2 plus minus radical 44 all over 2. And then, of course, you're going to break that down into two answers, x equals x equals. Because there's negative 2 plus radical 44 and negative 2 minus radical 44, and then divide by 2 for both. So it comes out to be 2.32 2 and negative 4.32, just to save you some time there. On your um, on your video, and then here we go. Take out a five x. Okay, and this is uh, x squared. I think you guys, uh, I had this on the other way. I think I switched E and F on your paper there. So if I, I think that's the case. Just just draw an arrow. I don't know if you noticed it or not. So it's five x, and then it's going to be x minus three, x minus three. And then this is 5x equals 0. So we get divide by 5 gives you x equals 0. And then here you get x equals 3, x equals 3. We have a repeating root. Now, just keep that in mind. And we'll talk when we go into lesson uh, 14. We're going to get into graphing and how this, this, this uh, relationship, it's called multiplicity. Write that down. This is called multiplicity. We're going to talk more about multiplicity later on in another lesson. Just keep that in mind. Remember that I brought it up. But this is called multiplicity. When you have identical factors and then you get identical roots, obviously, because it's going to get the same value, that's called having multiplicity. So uh, we will uh, we'll talk more about that. And I'll see you in class tomorrow to, to uh, practice these uh, concepts and some other things. See you then.